Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today, before we get started, I didn't acknowledge this in the last video and I'm pretty sure this had already happened, but I have reached 2,000 subs. So I just want to say thank you guys for following and keeping up and subscribing to my channel. Like it means a lot to me. I think I'm always telling you guys how much it means. So thank you. And if you are watching this video and you're not subscribed, please push that subscription button and also push that notification bell so you're notified anytime that I post a new video. So today to my dialysis patients or people who are anticipating being on dialysis or people who are contemplating whether or not you want this PD surgery so you can start peritoneal dialysis. Or if you're a person who is prepping for a transplant, today I am sharing a very intimate part of myself that took me quite a bit of time to kind of conquer the insecurity of their appearance. And that is my scars. I feel like I have so many scars. I'll just kind of be showing you what to expect. My body in particular is prone to keloids, so my body does leave deep scars. This was a huge concern for me for all of my surgeries. Hemo placement, PD placement, and both of my kidney transplants. I have scars, and I, I like to call them war wounds. Uh, just because they do tell a story and it is a physical manifestation of my survival. So they are something that I've grown to be extremely proud of. So this is going to be a pretty quick video. If you're out there and you're concerned like mine because I was prior to all this, I did do a lot of sports modeling. So I was concerned for work and just as a young woman, like is this going to keep me from being able to wear certain things? Like, how am I going to hide these? And I think one thing that I've learned is that I don't have to. I can, and they all of my scars are in places where I have the capability to hide them, but I shouldn't feel like that's necessary. You shouldn't feel like that's necessary. These are beauty marks. These are war marks. These are fight marks. These are survival marks that we should be deeply, deeply proud of. And I have owned them and I'm, I'm so super proud of them. So just so if you're doing any research and you're trying to figure out like what to expect, I have all the surgeries to tell you. Also, my first kidney transplant, a doctor actually went in and made the incision with the scalpel on his own. My second kidney transplant was a robotic surgery. So I got my kidney transplant at Vanderbilt Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. And the doctors told me that this was their first actual robotic surgery. So the actual scar is so much more minimal than my first scar, but things like that happen with the increase in technology. I'm gonna show you them both. So let's get into it. And make sure you don't forget to click. So look, just in this little two-piece outfit, you can't see any of my scars. Underneath here is where my two kidney transplant scars are. This is where my PD port was placed, the catheter was placed, and this is where my hemodialysis port was placed. So this is just up close. I'm starting with my hemodialysis port. Uh, actually, this is way bigger than what the scar is actually going to be. I went in after my catheter removal. I had to get a surgery to check because there was like some sort of fibrin or something left in there. So they had to cut me open again. And that's why the scar is bigger, but literally your scar is gonna be maybe a quarter the size of that. Maybe not even that big, but as you can see, it's slightly raised off of my body. I am prone to keloiding, so that is what happened here. But generally, this is something that still, unless I'm in like a super thin bikini, you really can't tell. Next up is my PD catheter scar. This is where that super convenient PD catheter was placed. And as you can see underneath my clothes, all these scars are pretty much undetectable. There it is. This one actually is way flat. I actually rubbed this one with a lot of African shea butter and oils, and it actually has worked really well to keep it super flat. This is just an up close view. And I am so sorry, guys. I'm dealing with a lot of stuffiness and congestion because I am just dealing with these seasonal allergies. So I hope it doesn't bother you. I'm trying my best to talk like I'm not super congested. 
So now we're finally to my kidney transplant scars. I'm going to start with my first one that I did in 2014. The doctor actually did a really good job in cutting it as straight as possible. This one actually had to be closed with staples. So because it was so long ago, you can't see it. And I rub a lot of oils and shea butters on my scars. But there were a lot of staple scars as well that have actually disappeared. This was going to be my flattest scar just because it was so long ago. So I've worked on it, rubbed on it, put oils and shea butters on it to actually get it to be as flat as possible. But look, this one was about, what, eight inches long. It's definitely long compared to what you'll see from my robotic surgery. So this is just an up close view as you can see I have rubbed and rubbed those keloid scars down and if you look very closely you can see those staple scars and this one I'm pointing to now is like the drain for when you have surgeries that the excess blood can drain out of that's actually a scar from that as well that I have on both of my kidney transplant scars. I actually will tag below the products I use to rub down my scars. These are war wounds and I find so much beauty in them now. It took me a long time to get to this point, but I'm here. So lastly, but definitely not least, this is my second kidney transplant that I received September 1st, 2021. And as you can see, it's so much shorter than my first one. This scar actually came from the camera that they use for the robot to actually go in and operate to make sure that they're cutting correctly. And these are the two drains, that blood drain that I was talking about for my first transplant. And here is your up close view of my second transplant, September 1st, 2021. But as you can see, that scar is so precise and so much shorter than my first one. Those two are my blood drains. And then that dark scar is going to be where that camera went in. But I think this is such a work of art. I find such beauty in these, especially the contrast of the first transplant to the second transplant, which I want to add happened seven years apart. This is just the comparison in size from the first transplant to the second transplant. Huge difference. I really hope this helps you in your journey somehow or some way. And good luck to you guys who are prepping for any of these surgeries. I love you guys so much and thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video.